Hey, 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 and welcome to this lecture that's designed to help you with the uh, lab exam 2, which is on the skeletal system. Now, it's a lot. I said that in the lecture video, but I'm going to say it again. Memorizing the bones and bone markings is not hard. It's a lot. So, go ahead, invest some time in this, um, and you really, really, really have to study. I'd say that this is the first um, most important thing. So, in the course, I think bones and muscles are the, and nerves are the most important part of the class. And so this is the first big thing we've had to do. And so make sure that you devote lots of time. I would not watch this video all in one sitting. I'm going to pause it throughout the video and take breaks. And I advise that you do the same. Um, if you were taking the traditional class, we would not do it all in one lab. We would do just the skull one day, and then just the upper arms, and then the lower arms. You know, so, I mean the lower legs, sorry. Whew. Anyway, maybe I need a break already. But take some time and really study this. You can do this. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, um, getting a degree is hard. But if you really want it, you can do it. Um, just remember why you started. Why did you go back to school? Um, it always helps me to think about how much the course cost because I'm normally paying out of pocket when I take a course and, uh, you know, we don't want to waste that money. So make sure that you leave plenty of time to study for this. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I have my computer screen pulled up like this. This is how I would study this. I would have, I would have it printed, but I would have the document here the anatomy 201 skeletal system bones and bone markings printed off so I could write on it. I would jot things down to help me. But think about this as like a word bank. No, you do not get a word bank on the test. Man, that'd be nice. But think about it would be like a word bank if you got a word bank. You've got to be able to spell these words correctly. So this is, um, you can't use the paper. And then this over here is images from the PowerPoint that's linked with the video. These are the images I will use on the exam. Right? Well, I will not use the images from the textbook. I do not want to trick you. My goal is to help you make an A. So I'm going to use these images. You've got to study these exact images. Um, and you want to know everything on this list. So look at the list, look at the pictures, and you know just start checking them off, knowing them forwards and backwards. Um, let's go ahead and get started. We'll zoom in here on the picture, so I won't show you that list anymore. I know you've got it printed in front of you. Um, and we'll go ahead. I'm going to be looking at my list going down it. Okay, the frontal, so the cranium or the skull, the first one is frontal, so you can see that one right here at the top, frontal bone. It's a real easy one to mark. Nice flat surface. I could put a one on it. Okay. On the frontal bone. So looking at your list, you'll see the bullet underneath. The bone is bold. The bullet underneath is a bone marking. And hopefully by now you've already studied the quiz for table 7.4. Okay. Right here, this little hole is called the supraorbital foramen. It's above the eye hole. Supra, above, orbital, eye, hole. So frontal bone, supra, orbital foramen. Okay, the next picture, uh, nope, okay, this one. It shows you right here, this is the parietal bone. These Both of these show the parietal bone too. So that's a parietal bone and that's a parietal bone. Okay, the parietal bone is sutured together. You can see now how it's um, the the bones fuse together like a puzzle piece. This is the suture. That's called the sagittal suture. And this one is called the coronal suture. So looking at this image, you can see frontal bone, the two parietal bones, sagittal suture, and uh, coronal suture. Okay, going back. This image will show you the temporal bone. And so the temporal bone is right here. This whole thing. And that part I've highlighted, that is the squamosal suture. So you can see it right there. That's the squamosal suture. And that's the temporal bone. Okay. The temporal bone has right here 
external auditory meatus. That's um, or acoustic, either one. That's the ear hole. Okay, it's got right here the mandibular fossa. That's where the mandible fits. Um, let's see if we can find a side view or a view of that without the skull and without the mandible. There we go. There it is. So right here, that would be the mandibular fossa. That's where the mandible fits onto the temporal bone. Okay, it's also got the styloid process. Let's go back to that picture right here. Okay, the styloid process pokes out right, oh man, right there. See how it pokes out? That will be your styloid process. Now let's find a picture where that is actually lit labeled. I'll try to use the pictures where they're actually labeled. That way you can make sure you're studying the right images. Oh, okay, it's labeled on the very next image right there, styloid process. So right there and right there. Okay, the next one is the carotid canal. Okay, carotid canal. That's this hole right here. Right there. And that's where the um, coronary artery, you don't have to know coronary artery, but when you take 202, you'll learn about it. That's where that artery carries um, blood up to the brain. So it's very important. We want to get blood and oxygen up to the brain. But look at the picture. Maybe you can kind of remember. It's like perfectly circle. And it looks like it's uh, most distal, not medial. Okay, the jugular foramen is behind it. And it, it's actually on both sides. They both are, but you can't see it on the left side. It's where the blood goes back to the heart. So remember those. Okay, still on the temporal bone, the going back two slides. The zygomatic process is doo -doo 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 right here. Right here. That's the zygomatic process. So on the temporal bone where it sticks out like that and meets, this one is the zygomatic bone. That's the temporal bone. And they come out and make this arch. So on the temporal bone is the zygomatic process. On the zygomatic bone is the temporal process. And then in the middle, we call that the zygomatic arch. I don't know why we got three names for the same bump. But if it's on the temporal bone, it's the zygomatic process. If it's on the zygomatic bone, it's the temporal process. So hopefully that will help. Okay, mastoid process is this big bumpy bump right here. You'll remember from the lecture video muscles attached there. The sternocleidomastoid muscle next chapter attaches there. Um, okay, occipital bone, that's the bone in the back. Right here. Occipital bone, big bone in the back. It's got the lamboidal suture. It's got this big old hole. That's it, but let's look at it through this. Yeah, there we go. That is the foramen magnum. Is the where the spinal cord goes through. Big, 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 big hole. And then it's also got, on the occipital bone, there's two little humps right there called occipital condyles. Let's see if we can find them labeled. There we go. Occipital condyles right there labeled. Okay. What I would do now, I'd take a break and go back and review everything we've just covered. So frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, occipital bone, and the bone markings of each. But that's just me. You keep going if you want to. Okay, the next one is the sphenoid bone. Okay, very first picture. Man, I've been looking forever. The sphenoid bone, I was trying to find it labeled for you, is right here on, it's in the eye. You can see it looks like it's the lateral portion. So sphenoid bone. Now, if, now if you, what you can do is you can take, you can't because this is a video, but this part right here of the skull, it comes off. So you can take that off. So that's what we're about to zoom in and look at. In this picture, okay, 
This is all the sphenoid bone right here. All that is sphenoid bone. So um, now you're looking at that. You can see the greater and lesser wings. Okay, look, it kind of looks like um, a butterfly or something. So this is going to be the lesser wings. And the, the big, deep in pits indentions are going to be the greater wings. So that's of the sphenoid bone. So you've got, let's do it again, lesser wings right there. Greater wings are this part right here. So take a second to look at that. Okay, then on the sphenoid bone, you've got foramen rotundum, foramen oval, and foramen spinosum. So look at the next picture, and they're labeled. So these are little holes that blood vessels and nerves go through. So first one is foramen rotundum, oval, spinosum. So the way I look at it, it goes like this. I'm going to use this picture. It's rotundum, spinosum is a little bit bigger. I mean, oval is a little bit bigger. And then spinosum is tiny. And they kind of go in that order. So they're on both sides. So rotundum oval oval right here and then spinosum is tiny and then lacerum is inside so it's going to be in a little bit I'll do it in orange so lacerum so take a second and learn those holes real quick because that's hard so take a second and memorize that you've got rotundum Oval, spinosum, lacerum. Let's do the other side. Rotundum, oval, spinosum, lacerum. And and the jugular foramen I won't ask from that side. I'm gonna ask it from the other side that we just looked at. Okay, the ethmoid bone is up here on the top, and you can actually see it if you look inside the nose from the front too. But the ethmoid bone has the cribiform plates, which would be here. So the, the plates are on either side of the crystagala. So the crystagala is in the middle. Crystagala is important because that's what the brain attaches to. That's on the written test. Not the lab test, but the written test. Uh, the perpendicular plates you can see if you look in the nose. Look right here. Wait, right there. There's your perpendicular plate. See the inside the nose, the little, the one that runs right down the middle is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Okay, maxillary bone. That's going to be the front. It's where your mustache will be. You're looking at it, but it's not labeled. Let's see, I'm sure it's labeled on this first picture. So you can see it labeled right there, maxilla or maxillary. Either one's going to be perfect for the lab exam. And that's where your mustache would be, above your teeth. Okay, looking now, you want to go inside, open up the mouth, and look at the head from underneath. And we're going to see that right here. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, so the maxillary bone, and you got this, the big flat area is the palatine process, which is not labeled. There you go, it's labeled on the next one. So the palatine process is labeled right there. Nice and palatine process. Okay, medial palatine suture. That's going to be this right here. Medial palatine suture. In the middle of the palatine process, it's a suture. Pretty easy. Okay, incisive foramen. Go back a slide. It's right, it's a little hole right behind your front teeth. So foramen, hole, incisive foramen. Okay, the palatine bone oops, is right here. It's a little bone in the back. So you want to know that this, this bone right here will do red. This bone is the maxilla bone. The orange in the back is the palatine bone. So make sure you get those two straight. And all it's got is the greater palatine foramen, which is labeled on the last one maybe. 
Here we go. Greater Palantine foramen, little bitty. Okay, uh, the zygomatic bone, that's going to be the cheekbone where you put your blush. It's a nice, nice, you can see it right there, prominent projection on the cheek. Uh, the temporal process is where it comes out. Right here, so just where it starts to protrude out. Now on the test, if I label that, what I'm going to say is name this bone. And you're going to type in zygomatic bone. If I say name this bone marking then you would say, uh, let's, let's say the sticker's right there. I say, name this bone, zygomatic bone. Name this bone marking, you're going to say the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. I'd you'll still give you credit if you didn't put of the zygomatic bone, but that's the temporal process. Okay, and then the whole thing right here is the zygomatic arch. Okay, nasal bone, that's going to be this bone right here on the top. You're not going to miss that one. You're going to get that one right. I'm sure it's labeled somewhere. Anyway, nasal bone right there on the top. Okay, looking into the eye, you've got the optic canal, which is on the top. And then you've got the superior orbital fissure and inferior orbital fissure. So you've got optic canal. And then over here, you've got superior orbital fissure inferior orbital fissure. And it's really two different holes but kind of looks like one in this picture. Just kind of there's a divider there. Okay, the vomer bone that is in the bottom part of the nose right in the middle and I just always think if you smell something nose, smell something bad, you're gonna vomit. So that's how I can remember that one. Easy breezy vomit. It's the best about bone and you don't have to know think about it. Okay, Inferior nasal concave, you'll see that right there on either side. Those are two bones. Okay, then mandible is the jawbone. Let's see. So it's going to be right well, there, mandible. Okay. You've got the ramus, and that's a line. You can't really see it too good on the picture, but it's a line that goes down right here. So I say name that bone marking, ramus. Mandibular condyle is on the back. Coronoid, that has an N in it. Pay attention to that, because later on we're going to look at a word similar that has an R right there. Coronoid is on the mandible, coronoid. Okay, mandibular foramen whole. So that's why those those words on that table helped you so much. Mental oh I lied to you. The mandibular foramen is a hole right inside here. And that's the mental foramen. Think about if you're thinking and you tap your you tap your jaw, that would be men, you're thinking mental foramen. I don't know if there's a picture of the mandibular foramen. So you can probably mark that one off your list. I won't be able to ask it because I can't see it. So but it I will tell you what it is though. It's a whole this right, this right down there. But don't worry about it, just mark it off the list. Okay, um, the hyoid bone, it's, it's below the mandible, but it's above the sternum. It holds the tongue in place. Okay, those are the ribs. I may just put one of those bones on there and say, name this bone and you're going to put rib. You don't have to know the difference in the kinds of ribs. Woohoo! That's good news. Okay, uh, on the vertebra, Okay, that first one, so I'm going down the list, not looking at the PowerPoint organization, but the list. Going down at the atlas is here. Right, and you know it because it's got uh, the two flat places where it go, the occipital condyle sits. So facets that articulate with the occipital condyle. It, all cervical foramen have these transverse foramen. So you would know that. Uh, it's got trans so transverse foramen. The axis is the next one. It's got the dens. You can get that one right. Okay, uh, and some of them have a. It says a bifid spinous process, and that's where. Do you see how this is like Humpty Humpty right there? That's what a bifid spinous process is. 
Okay, the thoracic or the lumbar. I'm not going to ask you which one is which. Yay! But you do know that the spinous process on the thoracic is long and on the lumbar is short. This is the body. And all of them have a body except the atlas. Okay, uh, they all have a vertebral foramen, which is that hole right there. I don't know how I'll ask that unless I use a pic this last picture. Yeah, right there, vertebral foramen. I could ask that hole. Okay. Uh, they articulate with the ribs. Look over here. So that yellow one articulates with the ribs. Superior articulating process and inferior uh, articulating process. Doesn't look like the inferior. Yeah, it is right there. Perfect. Okay, the next one is the sacrum. And it's five bones fused together. The triangular shaped structure at the base of the vertebral column. Okay, it's got the very top superior articulating process. Here. Okay, sacral canal. It's a canal on the next slide, maybe. I gotta do the front. Okay, it's a hole that goes down here. It actually runs behind all that. Okay, uh, the tubercle of the medial sacral crest, that's these, it goes all the way down, bump, 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 they're not very, uh, you know, even or anything like that. There's a tubercle bump of the medial in the middle of the sacral crest. Okay, the sacral hiatus is actually right here where it gets skinny. So the end of the sacrum before the coccyx, so that's the sacral hiatus. Okay, turn it over. Uh, sacral foramen. Oops. The holes. That's the holes on the on the thing. Let me see if it's labeled here. Yeah, right there. Sacral foramen is labeled. Sacral promontory is right here. This flat part. I think I messed up a minute ago. That's the sacral promontory. That's the superior articulating process. So get those straight. I think I might have messed up on that a minute ago. Okay. Coccyx is this little part at the bottom. It's four bones fused together, and you won't have to know anything else about it. Woohoo! Okay, ribs. I already showed you that picture, but I'm not going to ask you uh, true or false or anything like that because we don't have a picture of it. Um, you do want to know that for the written test, how many and what it means. Okay, the sternum. Okay, the top. So the whole thing is the sternum, manubrium or manubrium, either one, manubrium. The middle part is the body. The bottom part is the xiphoid process. The xiphoid process is what you worry about breaking during CPR. But if they live, then you're not worried so much about it. Okay, the next bone, uh, small. Okay, the clavicle, it kind of looks like a rib, but it's a little bit thicker, and it's got two curves. But So the clavicle, it's got a flat end called the sternal end and the acromial end that's curved. So that'll be pretty easy to get right on the test. Clavicle bone. I'm say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a sticker right here. And say, or put an arrow right here. Say, you know, name this bone. So let's just say I'm using this one. Name this bone, clavicle. Name this bone marking, acromial end. Good. Scapula, a little bit harder, but uh, I think it'll be not too bad for you. Okay, the scapula has this long skinny part right here called the spine and the spine goes out and is the acromion process. So spine and then acromion process. Coracoid process is the other one. So not on the spine, the other one. Okay, the glenoid cavity, that's this part right here. Ooh, that's not labeled very well, is it? That's that opening. That's the uh, shoulder joint. Superior border is going to be this part right here. Superior border. Okay. Below the spine, this flat part, all this right here, below the spine, is infra below the spine, fossa, flat part. Okay. Supraspinaeus fossa. I'm going to erase all this. Okay, right here. It's flat above the spine. Supraspinaeus fossa. Okay, lateral border is going to be on the same, I just remember it's the same size as the glenoid cavity. Lateral border, 
So the lateral border goes outside the body. Think about the humerus has got to go right here. So that's on the outside. And then the medial border is on the inside. Probably pause the video and practice all that real quick. Okay, here's your humerus. That's the upper arm bone. The top part is the head. Uh, anatomical neck and surgical neck. I probably won't. Don't even worry about that. Just know neck. So neck right there. Okay, greater tubercle is going to be right there. Remember, tubercle is on the humerus. Tubercle, greater tubercle. And then you've got the less. So here you can see them both. This bump right here is the greater tubercle, and that bump right there is the lesser tubercle. Okay, uh, and then you have the intertubular groove is in between. So greater on this side, lesser intertubular groove. Okay, deltoid tuberosity is like bumpy right there. Olecranon fossa is on it's on the posterior end, and it's going to be right here. Olecranon. And it's big. I always think, look at, you had to be able to spell these words right. So it looks like old cranian, right? So it's big, like a canyon or something. I don't know. It says on the posterior end, it's large. On the front, on this side over here, is the coronoid fossa. And it fits. There's a coronoid fossa on the lower bones, too. Okay. Lateral and medial epicondyle. So here's the medial one. And over here's the lateral one. I guess lateral's not labeled, is it? Okay, so medial and lateral epicondyles. Man, that word's spelled wrong. That should be epicondyle. E-P-I-C-O-N-D-Y-L-E. -I, -E. I didn't make the picture. Okay. Um, capitulum over here is just that little humpy area. And then the trochlea is this part, right? the little hump right there. So the fossa is the deep part. And then the little hump on the bottom is the trochlea. It's just a little pointed down process. Oh, now you can see anatomical neck and surgical neck. Greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, and intertubular groove. Man, it's better when you zoom in, right? Okay. Now, this is the ulna. Remember, it's got an ice cream scoop on it. So, the ulna has got the olecranon process right here and coronoid process with an N. Coronoid process and olecranon process. That's just like coronoid is like the mandible. And then on the very bottom, it's got doo -doo -doo -doo, the styloid process. So that very bottom is right there, that little tip. So that's easy. You got the ulna. Olecranon on the top, coronoid on the top, and styloid on the bottom. Okay. The radius, to me, this looks like a little button. Just a little perfect button right there. Whoops. Okay, the radius has the head, the top, the little button part. It's got radial tuberosity, which is a bump. You can see it on both pictures. Uh, the ulnar notch of the radius here. Let's see, let me erase everything. God, I wish you could see that better. It's like a flat area that is on that side of the bone. Ulnar notch of is the location of the ulnar notch. So it's like a flattened area. Okay, the styloid process at the bottom is the ulna and the radius both have a styloid process so that's easy breezy okay carpals and this is the picture I will use on the test so that makes it a little bit easier remember you've got scaphoid let's see I'll do it on the picture okay you got scaphoid right here lunate traquitrium Pisiform is on top. It's little bitty. And then next row, you've got hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. So remember, you've got scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, pisiform. Next row, hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. And so they're labeled on this, on the left hand side. 
scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, and then pisiform is on top of that. Triquetrium. Hamate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. I definitely pause the video, go over that, I'll erase it for you. Okay, so those were carpals. These, these down here are carpals that we just looked at. These are metacarpals right here. And these are phalanges. And they, they, there's a proximal, a medial, and a distal phalange on every finger except the thumb. The thumb only has a proximal and a distal. And so, uh, generally on lab tests, I'll ask, what is this one? And a lot of times students will miss it. They'll say it's a proximal phalange, but it's not. It's, it's metacarpal number one. Metacarpal number two, three, four, five, and then proximal distal. Proximal medial distal. Proximal medial distal. Good. Okay, next we're moving on to the legs. Pelvic, um, the pelvic girdle. So the first one is the coxal bone. Okay, when you're looking at the, the coxal bone has three bones each. So there's really, you know, there's two of them. So there's three bones each. The first one is the ileum. Oh, that's the ileum. This bone is the ischium. And this bone is the pubis. So three bones make up the coxal bone. The ileum, the ischium, and the pubis. Okay, so ileum has the iliac crest up here, posterior, superior, iliac spine. Look at that word. Posterior means back. Superior, on top of. Iliac spine. So it's, at the t it's right here, on the back. Anterior, superior, iliac spine will be the front, right here. Anterior, superior, iliac spine. Okay, this flat part right here is the iliac fossa. Okay, the opening, the opening right here is the acetabulum. Remember, the glenoid cavity is in the pectoral girdle, but this is the pelvic girdle. It's got the acetabulum. Okay, the ischium, you got this bone right here. It's got the ischial spine right here. Ischial tuberosity. Tuberosity is like bumpy. Right there. The obturator foramen is right here. Obturator foramen. For some reason, that word reminds me of operator. Okay, and then the pubis is this bone on the front. So take a second. There's a lot on the coxal bone. So take a second and go over that a couple times. Pause the video. Here, I'll re erase it for you. Okay, femur is next. The big femur, the biggest bone in the body. Okay, you've got the head at the top. So the head is right here at the top, the part that fits into the acetabulum. The neck, just like on the humerus, there's your neck. Greater trochanter is, okay, look right here. Greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. The big one, greater trochanter, small one, lesser trochanter. Okay, on the back side, there's this, like, long, skinny spine, kind of, and that's the linea aspera. It's kind of like the deltoid process on the, he, on the humerus. Okay, lateral epicondyle is Okay, this is how I always remember it. On the side of the head, that's going to be medial. The opposite side of the head is going to be lateral. Okay, so that's lateral, because the, you know, the head has to go in towards the hip bones. So, head, medial, epicondyle, and lateral epicondyle. Okay, in between the condyles, right here. In between, oh, it's on that side, whoops, right here. In between the big, the big bumps is intercondylar fossa. In between the condyles, flat part, fossa. You've got on the front the patella surface, so it's much smaller. And then lateral and medial condyles. So lateral and medial condyles are going to be these big parts right here. So this is medial because it's on the same side as the head. And that's lateral. So let me point something out. Epicondyle is on top of the condyle. So the epicondyles would be 
on top of the condyles. Good? Okay. Oh, the patella, that's the knee bone right in the middle. The In the very, very middle. Okay, the tibia here, you've got medial condyle. So the tibia is the big one in the lower leg. The medial condyles are on the same side as the medial malleus where it goes down. Right here. Okay, so that and medial condyle are on the same size side. Okay, and then you've got lateral condyle, which is going to be up here on the outsides. So that's medial right there. Okay, you've, next you've got the tibial tuberosity, which is going to be, it's actually a large bump that's right here. You just can't see it on that image too good. So, you, it, it's right there. There's a bump, a tibial tuberosity. Okay, anterior crest on the front, that's like your shin bone right there. That's what you feel when you feel your shin. medial malleus and with the malleolus there is a medial right here on the inside medial and the fibula has the lateral that's the long skinny bone that's going to go over here so medial that's the middle ankle bone and then lateral is on the other side okay fibula that's the little one remember you told a little small fib just a tiny fib so it's small this one's easy you got the head and the the lateral, so this one's opposite in the picture of the tibia. It's just flipped around. You got the head and the lateral meow. So that's going to be the outside ankle bone. And this should be our last slide. Okay, tarsals. For some reason, it seems like they're easier, I think. Okay, you've got the calcaneus, which would be like, I always think about what causes calluses on your heel bones, you know. Not related at all, but... There is the calcaneus, talus, talus sits on top of the calcaneus, navicular, and then medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform, and cuboid. So, cow told Nora, milk is like cream. That's the saying the books has for you. But these are the pictures I will use. I will use one of these three or more than one of, you know, maybe two of these three or three of these three. But these are the pictures I will use on the lab exam. And so...